All right, well, I'm back for some more summary on Wolfram von Eschenbach's esoteric text, Parzival. This is really a favorite of occultist, and <laughs> you'll see why. It's, it's very esoteric. Now, book three. Queen Herzeloid, the Queen of Wales, has gone into what's called the Waste of Sultane. These are the forest in order to hide Parzival from the world. And by the way, Parzival comes from Parzival, which means through the valley. That's what his name means. It's somebody that travels through. So he's uh, on a journey. Unlike Galahad, who comes fully formed as a hero, who's a later uh, insert into these Grail Romance tradition, Parzival's one of us and he's on a journey this is the most esoteric of the grail romances it's actually coming from earlier uh, celtic and welsh romance or, or stories here which i'm reading this uh, myths and legends by t.w rolston there's the uh, isbn on this book so I'm kind of reading a little bit of this, which is interesting. I'll have some things to say that I picked up, but uh, let's get back into this. So his mother's withdrawn to hide him from the world. She doesn't want him to become a knight. She teaches him a little bit about God. He says, uh, alas, mother, what is God? She says, son, I tell you in earnest, he is even brighter than the day. He who took upon himself a countenance fashioned after man's countenance. Son, take one piece of advice to heart and call upon him in your hour of need. His loyalty is always offered help to the world, but then there is one who is called Hell's Lord. He is black. Disloyalty does not avoid him. Turn your thoughts away from him and also from doubt's deviation. So she tells him about God and the devil. She then teaches him this the distinction between uh, darkness and light. And he is very skilled with javelins. He uses these. He throws these sticks and he hunts stags and creatures of the forest he's very much a a simpleton but he's like he's like the noble savage you know that tradition if you want to i know that's very politically incorrect to say that but this is what he is and he's kind of a he's kind of foolish he's a simpleton one day he's following a hunting track where he sees some Uh, knights approaching they he asked them a bunch of questions they get annoyed with him and the, but they explain to him he thinks they're god at first but they go we're not god and we're not angels we're knights and he's like well what is this for he's asking various questions about their armor and their weaponry and then he asks, how do i become a knight and they said well go to arthur's court and he'll make you a knight so he goes back and he tells his mother you know what's happened and that he's gonna leave and she's very distraught okay this is what she didn't want <laughs> she was trying to keep him from this so she dresses him in a fool's garb she puts him up and makes him look like you know a fool hoping that it will dissuade people from helping him but she gives him some parting advice she says you mustn't leave here before I've given you some advice on untrodden roads you must avoid dark fords those which are shallow and clear, there you must ride boldly. You must cultivate courteous ways, offer to all the world a greeting. If a gray wise man is willing to teach you courtesy, as he well knows how, you must follow his instructions willingly and not be angry with him. Son, let this be commended to you. Wherever you may win a good woman's ring and her greeting, take them. They will cure you of sorrow. You must hasten towards her kiss, grasp her firmly in your embrace, that will bring good fortune and high spirits, provided she is chaste and worthy. You must also know, son of mine, that the proud bold Leolin has won in battle from your princes two lands, which ought to serve your hand, Wales and Norgals. The note here says that Norgals is North Wales, so it's Wales in North Wales. One of your princes, Turkentals, met his death at his hand, Leolin. He slew and took captive your people. 
that I'll avenge mother, God willing, my javelin will wound him yet. So then Parzival kisses his mother goodbye and he goes on his way having received this instruction for her from her, but he's dressed as a fool. <laughs> All right. So he rides on. He comes across a woman named, oh, his mother dies. As soon as he leaves, she dies. She's just like, oh, and she dies of heartbrokenness. He comes across a woman named Jashut. He takes her ring and he kisses her and embraces her because this is what his mother told him to do. And her husband comes back and he is mad, okay? Because Parzival has taken her ring and her brooch and kind of left her dress disheveled. He ripped it. And this dude thinks that she's been unfaithful and cheated. This man, this lord, uh, it turns out that this lord, that this lady, um, this man has actually killed Gallows, which was Parzival's uncle, and he's he's the one that struck him with his joust and killed him. He's also an enemy of Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Parzival rides on and then finds a lady that's weeping over her dead knight. This is the Lady Sagoon. It's his cousin. She actually recognizes Parzival and tells him of his lineage. She then sends him purposely in the wrong direction because he wants to avenge the death of her knight, her husband, who she's holding in her arms. But she sends him in the wrong direction, fearing that he'll get killed because he's such a simpleton. So he travels on. He actually comes across a fisherman who directs him towards a great city called Nantes. This is the capital of Arthur's Britain. Parzival rides on alone and he encounters Ithgar of Gahaviz, the Red Knight. Parzival uh, and this knight, they talk with each other. This knight is carrying a goblet, okay? And he says, hey, I accidentally spilled wine on the Queen Guinevere in Arthur's court. Please go explain to them what's happened. And uh, he says, okay, I'll go talk to him. So Parzival rides onto the cart. He meets Arthur and he meets various knights. And then Kay, this lady, this lady named Kunaware, she laughs. She laughs at Parzival. She giggles. She finds him entertaining. And Kay, this is Arthur Seneschal and his uh, brother, right? Sir Ector and Sir Kay. So Kay beats this woman. And, and uh, Antenor, he then beats Antenor, who is this guy that doesn't speak, for speaking in defense of the Lady Coonware. Part, so he starts beating this dude up, punching him like in the face and everything. And Parzival's disturbed by this. He's like, what is going on? Anyways, he gets leave to go and take this Red Knight's armor from Arthur. This is Kay's suggestion. So he rides off to uh, fight the Red Knight and he actually kills him. This is on page 66. And it's uh, Ithar who is actually the nephew of Uther Pendragon. So he's a relative of Arthur. Arthur. Inuit, or Inwanet, this is the Lady Guinevere's squire. She comes out after Parzival, or he comes out after Parzival. Parzival's trying to get the armor off of this guy. He wants his red armor to wear it, but he doesn't know what he's doing. So Inwanet helps him take the armor off, then he helps him... Uh, put it on but Parzival doesn't take off his fool's garb he's still dressed like a fool in the clothes that his mother gave him he's like no these are my clothes that my mother gave to me and I will not take them off so Iwanet helps him put these clothes on helps him mount his horse and he rides off okay Parzival takes off just riding this horse to wherever it goes wherever it takes him he meets this man named Gernamonts, who is going to be his guide into knighthood, is going to teach him knightly ways and how to be a knight. He's following the instructions that his mother gave him about uh, submitting to the a gray-haired man. What was it that she said here? That you must cultivate courteous ways, offer to all the world a greeting, and if a gray wise man is willing to teach you courtesy, 
as well he knows how you must follow his instructions willingly and not be angry with him. So he's going to be instructed by this Gurnamonts, who is going to be, you know, the Obi-Wan Kenobi to Luke, the, the Yoda character. He's going to be, you know, his guide. And uh, that's going to be it for the summary of this book, three.